ladies and gentlemen a warm welcome to IHC ILF Samanvay series on modern classics of Indian literature. Thank you for making time on a rather unpopular day for programs, but uh, we have very engaging uh, scholars here who would look at uh, two important works from Kannada, which is Vamsha Vriksha and uh, uh, Samskara. Uh, Professor Satyanath, uh, was professor at the Department of Modern Indian Languages at the Delhi University. He recently retired. Uh, I know him uh, from many students who recall uh, fondly about uh, his guidance and uh, the how he instilled the love for comparative literature. I myself was a student of comparative literature at the Central University of Kerala, so I've uh, met many of his uh, uh, students at various occasions. Uh, Professor Reshmi Dore Swami is with the Jamia Millia Islamia University. She's a professor there. And uh, uh, my own experience uh, and understanding from my colleagues is that she used to help us a lot with the film club activities in the past. Uh, and uh, it's rather new uh, that I'm engaging with you. I'm a recent joining. And uh, her uh, work spans film culture and she would be looking at the film adaptations of uh, these two important texts and uh, what it uh, tells us. We also have multilingual uh, scholar, translator, uh, uh, Rita Kotari with us. She recently shifted to the Ashoka University. So we're happy that she would be in Delhi f uh, from now on. And her uh, uh, work, uh, includes uh, a lot of work in translation. She looks at the Sindh Kutch uh, Gujarati space closely. And uh, I'm sure her uh, view, her point of view would bring in a very fresh uh, perspective into the discussions. So I welcome all the three scholars here. And uh, we're a small group. And may I invite uh, Professor Satyanath to take this forward from you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for this opportunity and invitation. Uh, I have one or two things to um, uh, say just before I start formally. Uh, my relationship with uh, Rashmi is uh, almost 1978. Uh, <laughs> and uh, one of Karnat's Undan uh, on the Kaladali, the Kannada film which was selected, uh, she and her then boyfriend, now husband, Madan Gopal, uh, we had a heated discussion on that. Um, and my relationship with uh, um, the other speaker is uh, 2005 in uh, Asian Translation Traditions, a conference which she and uh, Devi organized at uh, uh, Tejgat. And then I think we have gone to, gone, we have been going to Asian Translation Tradition, and just now she told me it more or less <laughs> it has died its death. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to mention is a sad thing. Uh, the in 2015, in on the from the ILF platform, we had a a day's uh, symposia on translation. It was organized by Avdesh Kumar Singh. Avdesh Kumar Singh recently passed away, and yesterday was uh, his cremation in Surat. So I feel that it is, as a person who spearheaded translation, comparative literature, and, and a variety of activities associated with Indian literature, I personally feel it's very important to remember him at this moment. Uh, and I, 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 as I was very closely associated with him on, in several projects, I feel the lacuna of his absence. I will not uh, talk of adaptation. I will not talk of how uh, the literary texts were adapted into a film. Uh, I re I've read these texts many, many years ago, uh, so I will not attempt that. But I will talk of uh, these two films in the context of um, uh, the new wave in Indian cinema, as well as uh, in the context of Carnatican cinema in particular. I think uh, Professor Satyanath's uh, presentation just now was such a wonderful mapping of uh, what he calls the cultural public sphere. And he actually gave 
a kind of uh, background to uh, what I think will uh, connect to what I will be speaking about uh, in relation to Carnatican cinema. Now, uh, the new wave has had its prehistory, the Indian new wave. Uh, the prehistory would, of course, be the Bengal masters, Ray, Ritwik Ghatak, and several other uh, filmmakers who worked in the commercial realm who made extremely interesting films, as well as the great uh, Indian film, uh, Hindi filmmakers in Bombay who uh, were taken up with uh, social issues. I can just name a few, Mehboob, the early Raj Kapoor, Guru Dutt, um, Bimal Roy, uh, K. Abbas. Uh, along with this, we have the IPTA, uh, the Indian People's uh, Theatre Association, which was an all-India movement, uh, which gave an immense number of uh, not just directors, but musicians, songwriters, script writers. Uh, K. Abbas was one of them. Thank you so much for having me over. I, you can see that my credentials to be on this panel certainly have nothing to do with uh, my knowing Canada, <laughs> which I don't. Uh, and I think my both, both colleagues have provided extremely fine-grained, very granular kind of approaches to, to the text and across different genres, right? Uh, but I think I'm, I'm going to be asking a different set of questions. I mean, I, Satyanath mentioned towards the end of his uh, presentation that, uh, that I don't want to be dealing with textual representation, that it's an, it homogenizes things, that there's a kind of a plurality with which texts come and sort of focusing too much on representation if i were to s if we were to kind of discuss what is pranesh acharya's brahminism like or how does the brahminism of samskara compare with vanshavriksha and so on then it can only lead us to a more kind of a homogenized discussion but you know really speaking stories are formed by uh, by the traveling uh, other things have done to regions and then stories also travel to other regions. And that's also a reality, right, of the stories of these texts. So what does it mean, for instance? What does it mean for someone like me, who's from the region of Sindh, Kutch, Gujarat, in the, in the western part of India, where uh, caste is hegemonic, but its grammar and its syntax is vastly different from Karnataka? It's vastly different from Tamil Nadu. What does it mean for someone like me to be then reading these texts? What does it mean for me to be teaching these texts? Because not every text can, comes to us in the manner that it needs to be grounded. Right? Because after all, we do believe that some part of the meanings are portable. We do believe that some translation happens across regions. What exactly are the parts of these texts that do actually translate? What constitutes, for instance, if you like, a certain pan-Indian nature to, to a novel that is about caste? Is caste pan-Indian? Is it possible for us to think of caste as a very pan-Indian theme uh, with only minor modifications here and there? Or is, is the question, or is the question even deeper in these texts? And that question is, really speaking, what is the constitutive role of caste? How much of Pranesh Acharya is left after he has been polluted? What does it mean to say his Brahminism is gone? Is it an addendum? Is it an annexure that can actually go? by touching somebody, right, or by sleeping with somebody. I'm, I'm very interested even in the question of how both caste and desire regulate each other.